Hello everyone. I, my name is Christiana Davidson. I'm a psychotherapist and a hypnotherapist and um, I just wanted to jump on and uh, make a short video today for a change. Um, just to reach out to anybody uh, at the moment who is, finds themselves caught uh, in the restrict then binge cycle. Um, and I thought it was appropriate because, you know, food is kind of um, a big thing this weekend, uh, the Easter weekend. Uh, you know, everyone's faced with, you know, big roast dinners and, you know, mounds of chocolate eggs and all these sorts of temptations. Um, so you may find, you know, yourself at the moment, you're trying to stick to a healthy eating plan or you're trying to lose weight. And then here are all these... Uh, delights uh, that you're having to hold yourself back from or maybe not maybe you're just throwing in the towel and just saying well stuff it you know um, I'm gonna let myself go wild and then get back on <laughs> get back on the bus uh, next week um, now you know th this this binge restrict cycle is a very common one that I hear uh, with my clients uh, I myself uh, have had, you know, experience of this in my own healing journey. So uh, I really empathise uh, with anyone right now who uh, is struggling with this, um, and I'd like to offer some thoughts on it that may be helpful um, in this video today. And please do share your comments or uh, your experience. Uh, that would be wonderful. So uh, there you are. On one hand, um, you know you're determined to lose some weight because you know when you lose weight uh, and you shed those unwanted pounds you feel so much better about yourself um, and so you know losing weight is associated with feeling better about ourselves uh, you know when we're sticking to our plan and you know following the diet uh, it gives a sense of hmm, empowerment and being in charge but then on the other hand, you may find that there are times when you just throw in the towel. <laughs> you know, you've been great for a couple of weeks and then suddenly there you are in the kitchen, you know, eating all the things that were uh, forbidden. Um, and it's like, you know, it can happen any time. It doesn't have to be a particularly bad day. It could be a good day even. Um, you just end up overeating and succumbing to that voice inside that says, oh, come on, let's just eat. Let's just do it. Now, you know, apart from psychological, I mean, sorry, apart from physiological urges to eat that may come when we're sort of, we've got this restrict mentality, um, and you know, perhaps sometimes people can be restricting from key nutrients, and that can cause these urges. Apart from that, I mean, that's not my expertise. My expertise is the the psychological. So, you see, when we're trying to control our bodies by being slim, it's often a way to hide our deep insecurities about ourselves from the world. You see, if we can present to the world a slim, perfect figure, a slim outer appearance, then we're kind of saying, I got it all together. Um, you know, I'm, my life's going smoothly, I'm in control, I don't have any insecurities, I can, I'm confident. However, what often happens is that being slim doesn't actually resolve this problem. It might temporarily, you know, to lose some weight, you do start to increase in your confidence and feel, hmm, yeah, I have got it all together. But really, uh, these deep insecurities are still there. And it's, a, it's almost like a mask to hide, to hide them. They run deep, in other words. And so people find themselves needing some means of soothing these insecurities that still come up, even when you're, you know, on track with your diet. These insecurities may come to the surface and then people don't know what to do with them. And then, of course, what do they do? 
well, let's get some chocolate. <laughs> uh, let's, you know, whatever it is. Uh, let's turn to food to soothe this, these ang anxious feelings that come up, actually, that we don't want anyone to be aware of. So it's like a deep sense of inadequacy um, that we try to hide behind um, being being a, a perfect exterior or being slim, in other words. So the anxiety caused by trying to show that you've got it all together when really inside you don't feel like you do uh, by being thin and slim is soothed over unfortunately, temporarily, by overeating. And then what happens? Well, then there is the shame that sets in. And we think that everybody else can see it. Uh, you know, they can see we, you, you, you've gained weight. Um, and it's like, you know, the world is seeing then that you haven't actually got it all together. Um, and then, of course, we need more food to soothe that feeling. <laughs> and so the cycle continues. Uh, so food, on every occasion, is the enemy. But it's also the soother. So this is the difficulty uh, when you get caught up in food uh, reliance or food addiction. It's both the enemy and the soother. So what can we do here now? I mean, Easter weekend, uh, you may be caught in this. I heard some wonderful advice recently. Um, it's so simple, and it, it often is. You know, we've got to find other ways to soothe ourselves, and that's part of the program that I've put together. I've got a wonderful, practical tool that I've come up with that's so helpful. Um, but apart from that, what can we do today if you, you know, before then, what what we need to do is we need to be aware of when we're about to turn to food and to catch yourself in that moment, take a pause and just ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do right now to really take care of myself? Because that's what you're asking for really, that's what the inner child is asking for. It's not really asking for food, it's asking for soothing and care and compassion. Um, so you may find that helpful uh, when you're faced with your mound of chocolate and it's calling to you. Ask yourself what it is that you, you need to do to care for yourself right now. Um, and if you can, let that be your guide. And if you'd like to work with me, you know, on, on really getting to the bottom of these inadequacies, you know, because really they come from childhood, particularly if you come from a dysfunctional or narcissistic family system. That is what you're going to be fed. Uh, that's what your, your parents felt and tried to cover up. And that's what they will have instilled in you to do, to put on... An appear, a, a show, put on the appearance, keep up the appearances to hide the inadequacies of the family. And so we're groomed to believe that's what we've got to do. But that's not the answer. The answer is not to cover them up. The answer is to say, it's okay to feel inadequate. Let's have a look at it. Let's find out where it comes from. And let's give you the tools and the skills and let's build you in your confidence. Um, because really, uh, you know, we're, we've all got things that make us feel inadequate. You know, we look at celebrities and all, you know, all these idealised images, but behind the scenes, you know, there isn't a person on earth, I don't believe, who, who doesn't really have these deep-seated insecurities. So you're no different from anyone else. Um, you're not alone, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, everyone, I just want to wish you a really happy Easter Sunday tomorrow. Um, if you celebrated Pes uh, Passover on Thursday, happy Passover. And if you're in Ramadan at the moment, that's a time of fasting. So, um, you know, uh, very inspiring, all of those who are, are going through a fasting time at the moment. Um, Okay, thank you everybody. I'll leave my link at the bottom in case you uh, would like to reach out for a free consultation. Take care. Bye now.